All right, welcome to a special episode of Dogs of War Cry, The Barking Lot, uh, where we talk a little bit less about narrative and a little bit more about gameplay, tactics, rules, etc. And uh, joining me for the time being for this tester, for this test, uh, test, test, this uh, innovative new uh, format, like there's nobody on the internet or even on YouTube talking about rules and gameplay. So... Like we're really cornering that market. Wow, well, it feels it feels special, electric. <laughs> <laughs> There's real electricity. Uh, in shout here. out to everybody who uh, is on YouTube and the internet who talks about gameplay um, more than we do. Yeah, making probably high quality content too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we've seen a lot of it. Uh, and uh, the barking lot came out of uh, Mike and I. Uh, I'm Eric Oakland of the Dogs of War Cry. This is uh, Mike Samson. Uh, Samsum. San Sansum. Look, some I hear it so wrong so many times. I question how to say it most well, of the time. San, I've never, sum. I've never seen a more sandsome gentleman in my life. That's uh, awful kind of you to say. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, after game nights, uh, Tuesday night at our local game shop, mm-hmm. uh, especially in the summer, or more specifically in the summer, uh, we'll find ourselves uh, the the shop will close at ten, and we'll be out chatting until midnight. Mm-hmm. About the games we've been playing, other ideas we have, building lists, uh, and then uh, you know other people get to see them at you know mm-hmm. the results of that when we go to go to the two events we've gone to, yeah. three, <laughs> four events we've gone to. I think yeah, for, it's it's less than ten, more than two, somewhere in <laughs> somewhere in that realm. Uh, you know the ones you've seen. And uh, recently, I was named uh, Eric Oakland. Uh, uh, one of the best game uh, Warcry players yep. in North America. One of uh, by one of, uh, by top, um, uh, I'd say tournament reviewer. The, I mean, the most highly accoladed. Yeah, uh, yeah. Warcry knows everything about yeah. Warcry. I think officially, Dan the salty sea. Yeah, the saltiest of seas. Yeah. Named you yep. one one of the best Warcry players in North America. In North America. <laughs> North. Uh, wow. North of America. <laughs> the, the northern part of America. The Americas. <laughs> wow. I mean, and my, what, what else can you say to that? Uh, and you're used to getting narrative, Eric. Uh, Narek. Narek. <laughs> <laughs> In a regular podcast. And Mike says, why, are, why aren't we giving people more? Oh, it's a, I listen to the Dogs of War cry normally, and I'm shaking my fist, pounding the table, going, there's not enough. There needs to be more. <laughs> So we're going to take a a very logical approach to this, uh, do something a little bit different, and we're going to kind of do these in short bites because we dogs. Woo! Woo, woo, Um, woo. And we're going to cover a a small topic at a time and see where it goes, see what kind of sense we can make or nonsense we can make. (laughs) So far, not so great. It probably starts nonsense, and we'll see if we can stir it into something more. We'll tighten it back up. Yeah. So, Mike, what are we going to talk about this episode. Yeah, so we've been... First episode. First ever, the maybe only, only ever maybe episode. Only episode. We'll see how what bad this one What is the most takes. important thing we should start with? The, the most important thing we should probably start with is the thing that everybody, when they're playing Warcry, talks about, thinks about, the number one ability that comes up. All the ins- time. Every ins- game. <laughs> inspiring presence. The one that <laughs> I can't remember a game that it hasn't been at the <laughs> forefront of what happened to what we were planning and thinking about. Okay, jokes aside, uh, <laughs> it is not an often used ability, mm-hmm. um, yeah. but it uh, came up multiple times recently. It's for crazy, you. yeah. Um, and uh, and, really and for those who aren't familiar with the rule, <clears throat> it's a universal ability for mm-hmm. both match play and narrative mm-hmm. play uh, on a triple. If your fighter has a hero rune mark, they can uh, pop that triple. And uh, after they're done activating, yep. they can choose a friendly fighter within six. Well, it's got to be six. Look, if we were ready for this, we'd be all over how many yeah. inches. It's got, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's six uh, inches. And then they can activate. Um, yep. Uh, and so, Very next, yeah. Yep. Without the uh, enemy getting a chance yep. to go. And so you sort of get to you activate twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It happened uh, most recently in a game you and I were playing mm-hmm. at uh, the the. Goose chase. Yeah, chasing those geese. Yeah, uh, up at Dan's event. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Shout out Salty Sea again. Man, can't stop talking about that guy. Like, this is a, also, this is a podcast uh, about Salty Sea. Yeah, yeah, check out Salty Sea <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, and um, it came up a couple of times, and we've also, just talking about it, mm-hmm. uh, realized that it's popping up a lot in uh, Games Workshop's materials. Yeah. And a lot of the more recent... 
uh, like rules packs and mm-hmm. uh, narrative stuff for the new war bands that are coming out that they're feels like they're really trying to push it. Or I think as, as Dan salty C <laughs> has said <laughs> that uh, they, they maybe have an idea that this is a better ability mm-hmm. than it is or more, more used than it is for sure. Yeah. It's definitely uh, it's been, I mean, narrative's got a whole, whole piece dedicated to it. Um, they've built an entire war band where functionally the, um, the, the gimmick is that you can do it on a double with the uh, the claws of Karanek recently. Um, there is in the what is it? There's the a universal heroic trait, yep. which is uh, mm-hmm. you get to do uh, inspiring fr- presence for free without using ability dice yep. for narrative. Yep. Um, they and, added it into the the blessing system too, I think. And I can't remember I, I for match play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I can't remember if you can do it on any fighter. You can just pay to get let them do inspiring presence yep. irrespective of if they have the uh, hero rune mark. That yep. sounds right. But <laughs> why don't we see it as much as maybe GW, GW thinks that we should see it? What is, what's the main kind of inhibitor for people using or for maybe for you using yeah. inspiring presence every game. Yeah. So the the biggest thing for me is that you're you're functionally trading a resource, whether it be your your don't so like I mean to get it, right? It's a triple. So you're either going to be rolling a triple and then not upgrading that to a quad, which, you know, there's usually better abilities on a quad if you put a wild dice into it, or you're, you know, you're upgrading your double into a triple with a um yeah, with a wild dice yep. again. So it's and it's often a heavy... you and you might have other triples that your warband plays off. Exactly. Of. If you're upgrading from a double to a triple, you yep. probably have something in mind, mm-hmm. um, and it's rarely inspiring presence. For sure, yeah, <laughs> almost um, never. One because it's in the universal ability, so mm-hmm. it's sort of sitting off to the side. But your warbands are warbands are usually packed with yep. abilities that you build around, and so. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're running a monster, you want Dragon Maw. Mm-hmm. If you're uh, running... Calthea is a great example. Yep, if you're running Fight uh, fight for Profit yep. for the KO. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got triples that are juicy, yep. tasty, uh, pack a punch. You know, they, mm-hmm. they have an economy of activation and, and um, kind of what they give the army. So first off, you're using a triple, which is a pretty highly sought after resource yeah. for really high value abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then I think, too... Um, for me, um, activations uh, can be really important depending on the warband. Exactly. Right. If mm-hmm. you are someone who wants to have uh, activation um, priority or um, dominance mm-hmm. over your your opponent, because you need to get them into a position so that you can do your thing, yep. um, or preserve your best fighters to act last mm-hmm. before they put themselves in danger, uh, using inspiring presence is not is often not the tactic yep. when you're maybe also using the weight action mm-hmm. because you're just drawing it out and yeah you know. it's, it's kind of doing the opposite of what you're you're trying to do yep. with those and so ones, even so. in a warband where you maybe have fewer fighters yeah you may be even less likely to use inspiring presence mm-hmm. um because you're already down in activations <laughs> yeah you're, you're gonna be done with your turn in a hurry you can or maybe you, you know you're thirsty you need to run to the bathroom before the round and you go, hey <laughs> let's get this round done and i'll meet you in a minute when you're done with your turn yeah. so well and you, like you said uh you know um the claws of karanak have <clears throat> kind of a use of it to mm-hmm. try and like hyper activate yeah with the um, with the blood whelps the they're they're 95 90 95 90 point chaff and then the uh the hounds of wrath so it's i mean it, it's cool if you get it I, I played them in league and i just felt like it never really came up in a in a way yep. that was meaningful so that yep. was kind of a bummer especially because they're they really for that warband in particular it seems like they're like this is really good and i i didn't see it playing a lot yeah. of games with them. <laughs> uh soul sworn uh are all all of the fighters have a hero mm-hmm. uh rune and so, in theory, you could have two or three of them activate if you had the uh, free uh, inspiring presence mm-hmm. for a heroic trait, and you had a couple of triples. You could get all, four of them activating you could, ooh, ooh, uh, through that. You know, what so a there's turn. question of like, hey, isn't it? Wouldn't it be cool if it could stack? And I, yeah. <laughs> I've, and it, I think that, like the the as a as a trait or as like a game space, mm-hmm. that's the first thing you think of is sort of like, how do I, yeah, trigger this and. How do I intentionally do it? Yep. When do I want to use it? What are what are yeah? When are the spaces that this is going to be the most optimal thing that I can yeah, yeah be using? And uh, I mean, so there's 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 just a lot that you trade mm-hmm. to use it. But as you mentioned uh, during our game and and happened in our game, there's been a couple of times recently where that's come up for you. And actually, in this last week, you know, two three weeks after mm-hmm. playing that game, I kind of wish I had. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and for me, for me, when I played it, it came in a very specific situation mm-hmm. and that's 
at the beginning of a turn where I have a chance to take out a key target. Mm-hmm. Uh, in your case, I you had a um, the Bestigor destroyer, a Bestigor destroyer, yeah. and I had a couple of these little dwarf guys. Oh, uh, didn't see. Uh, didn't you see that? Uh, oh. Do you want, do you want me no, to I put can't. these? Should no, we put these away? Um, <laughs> I'm just and <clears throat> go on, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and it would have been really good for me to a take out that uh, that fighter because yeah. it was the biggest damage piece in yeah. that He's on that objective, guy. and and those guys had uh, a few wounds taken off of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it would remove another activation from you uh, down the road. And I already had activation priority, so yeah. I had initiative. I fought. I I attacked him mm-hmm. two attacks with one. Uh, fighter, and then uh, with the hero rune mark, yep. hero rune mark, and then I use inspiring presence to Pop try it and over to the other. We had guy. like three wounds left. I'm it like, can insane. I just take? Ugh. Can I just take them off the board? <laughs> uh, didn't work. It, but it should have. Mathematically, it was a phenomenal decision on your part. I want to, <laughs> yeah. It, and it cascaded into this fighter didn't dive on another like twelve dice that got chucked at him, which yeah, yeah, was yeah. Again, a novelty that was very yeah, enjoyable yeah. to watch, but in no way uh, <laughs> <laughs> admonishment of what heroic presence or heroic uh, or inspiring presence can yeah. do. <laughs> but it was an it was a, a moment in which uh, I had a triple mm-hmm. uh, that I didn't decide instead of using it for Dragon Maw, if I could take out this one piece mm-hmm. that would really secure my spot in the middle, um, and you know just in the round put me in a better position for uh activations yeah and even long game wise right it would have been it's just getting rid of my models is better than me getting rid of your models because i had fewer and yeah yep it lasts (laughs) now when you saw it previous to that Mm -hmm. in a recent match was that a similar scenario or was there something else going on yeah so there's been a couple of different ones that have been really interesting um the the first time that was like the most noteworthy was at adepticon this year a great event that i was the narrative event i'm just trying to remember who ran it it was these cool cool guys um anyway it probably doesn't matter um (laughs) but so yeah we were doing the narrative event and uh, it was the uh, the extra game uh, where we only had to bring a couple of a much much smaller percentage of whatever. Yeah, it was our was. it was our evening mm-hmm. multiplayer event. So yeah. we had uh, five uh, boards, twenty people, four mm-hmm. people at each board. Chaos, uh, craziness, destruction, destruction. Order destruction. The <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was I was playing against a, a soul blight guy, and uh, I was playing with some iron jaws, and it was the beginning, I think, of like the second round, and first round we killed one of uh, maybe two of the the guys. Soul blight leader was still on the board, had a triple, so I was looking down the barrel of bringing a bringing some friends back. <laughs> I was not uh, was not about it. I was not interested. I said I've already killed these guys once. I would prefer if they stayed dead. So um, I had and I had nice and punchy pieces to be able to do it. I was sitting with a mega boss. I was sitting with a, a brute a brute with gore hack as a nice two inch range guy. Um, came on in with. My mega boss and I kind of did the math on it and thought, I, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to kill this guy in the first go. Uh, and instead of risking kind of like the roll to, to get him down, um, I decided that it was I was probably better spent uh, having having my other buddy here uh, take a take a big swing at him instead of just rolling two more dice. I could roll three more dice to, to kind of get through the wounds. And again, that kind of cascaded because if I had not been able to kill him would have been able to res something and so now i'm looking at two bodies that are still sitting there and it just you know it really would have and le- leaving soul blight leaders alive is a one-way ticket to oh. uh the board staying fuller than it should be <laughs> so <laughs> well and so yeah it was it was the it's this clutch moment mm-hmm. where if i could just give up some activation ad- advantage in terms of like you know delaying to, yeah. to play things yep. for like activation intensity uh, to be able to lay more stuff into a model before they get to yeah. act or react. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's that's where like the biggest trade off, right? Like that's where you have to make the decision because what you're giving up is, as we said before, the resource. But what you're getting back is something that typically you already have, but you're getting the, the order, right? You're getting the sequencing out of it, and so you really have to take advantage. There has to be a reason why you want to have this this turn play out in the way that it's it's going to play out if you get to go twice. So, yeah, um, yeah two two pretty prime examples again. I yeah. I was by the way. I killed it. It died, and hey, no more, hey, no hey. more, uh, no more skelly bobs coming that's to bother a, me. That's a that's a light dead board. It was yeah. It, what? So it light on? It was lighter on death. <laughs> okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. Like well, you old, killed a lot of stuff. Yeah, the death player had less. Yep. 
No, yeah, no. Okay, now I'm following. Yeah, yeah dead, less death, more, more death with less death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, you know, and, I, and I'm thinking about um, <clears throat> how you know one of the other things that sort of you know it's stuck with heroes, mm -hmm. and so your heroes often one unless that has, you want to spend the points right, or, you know, with the with the blessings, assuming right. you're allowing blessings. Yep. So if you let blessings in, then you could trigger it off of something that uh, maybe has you know less impact on having other abilities that it mm -hmm. can use um or if you have a, a double heavy warband mm -hmm. where you like doubles a lot yep. um uh then maybe having a you know a triple to to use for something yeah. like this and plan it out could be good mm -hmm. um if you do have a lot of activations to spare yeah then maybe you know having your punchy stuff your mm -hmm. hero and your you know something punchy work together or or a little like um uh what would you call it a, a babysitter piece or oh like yeah a, you know yep um you know or, some, or I mean, a shield going with yeah a big exactly that's what i was thing. just gonna like, say making a wall trying to yeah trying to kind of castle up a little bit yep. could be helpful to keep your keep your more delicate pieces and important pieces safe but what i'm thinking yeah. of for that is probably something like with gloom spite you have uh snark sour tongue absolutely you know super glass cannon -y. the more you can put things in front of him he's got three inch range you know keep keep yourself safe and and swinging while uh yeah <laughs> well you put your bodies yeah. in front yeah uh going back to death uh they have thralls mm -hmm. uh specifically the uh, dire wolf well i think both thralls can do this uh mm -hmm. as a reaction yep um if uh something moves within three inches of them uh three inches of a hero mm -hmm. that they're next and they can uh they can move if they can end within one inch yep. and make an attack so you yeah. get a Free re reaction rampage. Yeah, reaction rampage. Um, We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that could be really good, especially in narrative, where mm -hmm. you can use a, a free reaction. Yeah, busted in air. Right, and <laughs> then, all game one, and just then, shooting across the board, and then activate. You know, they've just moved. You mm -hmm. activate the the leader that they've just come into. The leader attacks, and mm -hmm. if they don't kill it, then the dire wolf could attack after mm -hmm. that again. So yeah. you get three attacks from the dire wolf. Mm -hmm. You know, in a, in a you know within that yeah just your bang points. bang bang here we go yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and then of course once you've done that it's light death L yeah, light yeah, light death heavy on the death <laughs> sorry yeah, you're right double yeah. down on I'll, death. I'll figure it out i'll get yeah, it yeah yeah <laughs> stay with me mike uh, <laughs> um light yeah heavy. yeah yeah the death pun just maybe just let me do all i'll just laugh <laughs> <laughs> so, you <laughs> um so there's, you know, maybe there's a place to stack it mm -hmm. and, and know that, again, you can apply a lot of force in one place, you know, and it, and it's, it is different than, you know, say some of the, um, uh, the soul sworn where on a double, they can give their friendly, a friendly fighter, an extra move or attack. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's for a double they're doing that. Right. But that's, but that's also, you're getting action economy out of that. Right. Yep. Cause you're not, you're not using their two actions that they get that turn that you're giving them a whole bonus one, which is, you know, yep, yep. universally considered, this is yep, great. Yep. We love this. So, <laughs> yep. So it's sort of, you know, it's, it's really in a pinch mm -hmm. situational. Yeah. Often you're not trying to set up for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's more, yeah. It, it pops up and you're like, it's, yep. I think the hardest thing, another, another great example, if I can chuck another one out there yep. was uh, in the, the tabletop simulator league recently, I was playing my, uh, I, I was pushing to my limits with how elite I can get. And I was playing a three model list. Had okay. the uh, had the old chimera in so there. You had three activations. Uh, I had I had five activations. Oh, right. a Brought monster. a monster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so um, <clears throat> had the chimera, had a fomeroid crusher, and a uh, my leader of the warband for this very thematic and uh, heavily you know <laughs> lined up warband. Um, the was a slaughter priest with, slaughter priest with axe. Okay, I was playing a guy who was playing cruel boys. And it was a treasure mission, basically. Uh, last round we got to. Um, he, my, my Chimera was in a great spot to start mowing. Right at the end here, I was going to get a couple of kills and pick up like three points, I think. Yeah. And so uh, what I, I lost initiative, and the guy that I was playing won it. And it was really, really cool because he, <laughs> he was uh, Manok with his leader. I uh, activated him first, so he had the hero mark. He popped heroic, uh, inspiring presence, um, and let oh I can't remember Tor Torka Tough Skull, who's got a net. Um, so he disengaged his leader and ran him off into the corner, so he was out of dragon mall range. Torka Tough Skull went next, chucked the net on my Chimera, 
and stopped it from going over and chasing his leader down to get that kill. And then, yeah, I mean, I was able to kill one thing with a chimera, but he still moved away with that one. So, yeah, yeah it, was, it was another one where it was like because of that sequencing, he was able to get the, you know, one, keep his leader safe where I was going to go next and probably kill yep. him Two get a net on me. So I couldn't go anywhere else. It was a really, really cool combo yeah. that <laughs> super effective, <clears throat> which in that in that role, what you're essentially doing is giving your your leader some extra actions, mm -hmm. right? You're sort of trying to to make a make something happen that benefits your leader um, or the situation. And so maybe that there's a, and maybe, maybe people already do this, you know, like when you put your battle groups together, you know, your, who does your leader going with? Who yeah. are your, is your hero rune marked uh, fighters? Mm -hmm. Who are they paired with that could allow that inspiring presence to be more useful? Yeah. I, I coincidentally uh, was not, or I guess this is actually a full irony. He wasn't in the same one. <laughs> he had well, charged across sure. the board to get there, but it is a great consideration, right? Like how, how do you, how do you take the most advantage of that? When, when is it, you know, advantageous for you to get those combos off? And I think yeah, yeah. that's, that's actually a really interesting place. I think that I'd like to look into and explore more is yeah. now that we can do it, not just with the leaders with having the, um, the, uh, blessing for it like what what combos are out there that you can kind of get that off with right how can i maybe double net something right the true blood um from um mm -hmm. what is it the uh, uh splintered thing um auto net right i obviously i guess you can't net right though because you're because <laughs> you've got to use two abilities to be able to do that but um well, getting an attack off and and still being able to chuck a net on something or you know really really comboing off into where those really important yeah. uh, abilities go to in the second piece yeah um because I mean, we don't use it a lot because maybe we're not setting up well for it. Yeah. You know, maybe we're not putting the right things together. We're not thinking about it mm -hmm. enough. You know, similar like again, rampage has been such an eclipse over yeah. a lot of the other abilities. Mm -hmm. You got a <clears throat> triple. You went right for it before, yep, right? Yep. It's, yeah. Uh, rampage is so good that maybe uh, we we cut down that tree and the plants underneath it can grow. <laughs> uh, not and, just the faction quads, but yeah, yeah. all of the triples out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so uh, you know. Maybe we're just not as good at War Cry as we thought. We well, were. well, well, and that's coming from one yeah. of the best. But you're War definitely Cry worse. Players <laughs> no, in North America, in the northern part oh, of North man. America. Um, yeah, no, but it's it's a great point though, right? Like what? How it, Rampage made it so easy to just ignore so much stuff, and yep. I, <laughs> I did. There's a lot. I'm like yep. I'm learning a lot of faction quads now because. It's sometimes the the better use of the the yep. dice now. So, yeah, I think it's a really really interesting space to to look into and explore to see what what combinations can you get out yep. of it. And and it's hard too because like the what, you can't rely on abilities, which is usually the combo that you're looking for, right? You're mm -hmm. looking to go, how can I put this ability and this ability together to get a force multiplier or really get some good control out of it or something like that. But um, you know, having yeah, ha having the flexibility and the freedom to be able to use it now. And I think, again, so many more models that, you know, what what is out there? You're going to probably mostly be relying on moves or attacks. Yeah. Um, and so that's going to be, you know, for movement is probably going to be more mission specific. Like, yeah. hey, can I can I? Well, I mean, a treasure mission is a great example, right? Like my leader goes start the game. I'm going to grab this treasure, but also I'm going to grab that treasure. And how, how impactful is that to have? you know, kind of stealing one of your opponents, yep. you know, one of the deployment, yep. your opponent's treasures that they should normally be getting yep. uh, maybe is another great space to use it. Some of these, um, you know, like ogres or trolls mm -hmm. <clears throat> where you could uh, potentially, you know, go in at maybe turn two, mm -hmm. you got stuff within range to go and just demolish mm -hmm. somebody's battle group. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just, <laughs> yeah. Hey, <turn. laughs> oh, baby. I just like smashing stuff, <laughs> man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like being able to just like do a blitzkrieg yep. into a battle group with a couple or of big, playing big pieces. Gloom's fight, uh, gets Krieg. a gets Krieg. Mm -hmm. There you go. Here there it you goes. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a couple bounders. Yeah, uh, the six inches makes it harder because they want to fly. You they know, do. They want to go, go, go. Whereas mm -hmm. those, you know, trogoths and ogres are move four. So yeah. Um, but yeah, and you can. I mean, yeah. It, it, sometimes you can get that. You know, yep. the, the on the mall path to get the shoot the ogres sure. a little bit more, but. Yeah. But if you want to, if you want to make a really big impact mm -hmm. in in a short amount of time, yep. uh, before like you could potentially take out three of the you know three activations on your yep. opponent before you know so you're trading two activations for three that they don't get. Yep, um, and and potentially you're right depending on the meaning for and, that, and that's again where it's so situational too, right? If I'm gonna kill something that's just kind of there as a body, 
how important is it? But if I'm getting through some pretty chunky and important pieces that my, my mm -hmm. opponent's going to be relying on, that can be really good. Yep. As you're saying that, it kind of made me think of uh, a really good strategy that typically, you know, is one that I've kind of uh, adopted more recently is uh, chucking something nasty into where your opponent is about to deploy. Uh, mm. What a phenomenal like, opportunity to uh, go, okay, here come all my new guys. And unfortunately I want initiative and I'm just going to kill them all <laughs> before yep. you yep. get to play with them. So yeah. again, really, really effective to just be in there and then yeah, just yeah. chew through it before they get a chance to literally yep. do anything yep. with them. Yep. So um, inspiring presence, certainly situational. Mm -hmm. Um not often overlooked because of rampage mm -hmm. and uh difficult to you know it's it's a high has a high cost yeah of uh multiple activations mm -hmm. and a, a triple uh but maybe there's more uh play space for it mm -hmm. without rampage in the mix as often um and maybe we've just you know been not building for it yeah for sure. And so it becomes more situational because we don't have the one. Yeah, we're never ready for it. It's yeah. There's there's eight chances for us to use it in a game, and none of those ever come up. Yeah, it's yeah, not going to happen that much. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, any other thoughts on inspiring presence uh, to inspiring those who are still present? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I think I think uh, I'm inspired to to give it a go, right. uh, and hopefully in our next game that could be my present to you. Oh. It, no, I'm gonna kill you in the game. Uh, in game, yes. Oh. <laughs> you know, I gotta gotta get that that notch on my belt from one of <laughs> the top Warcry players. All right, how many times have we said it? Is that can we not in say North it ever? America? <laughs> can we not say it ever again? Okay, cool. You, I'm say just saying you brought it up. I'm just <laughs> I did. <sighs> All right. Oh my God! Stop talking about how good I am already. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks, Mike. Uh, mm, don't worry, man. Mm, just yeah, you just slide the money over after. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll let you win a game. Dude, look, okay, you don't need to lie to me now. But <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us uh, for a impromptu episode of Dogs of War Cry. I hope this uh, wasn't sour in your ears or on <laughs> your acid on your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, Mike, where can they find you if they want to talk to you about war crime? Yeah, for sure. My home address. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I didn't misunderstood. No. So uh, I'm on Discord. Uh, I'm on the Mortal Realms Discord a ton. I'm on the, the big war cry Discord. Uh, I'm on there. I'm Arm War Enthusiast 7. Yep. yep. Yeah. And uh, I am uh, either Eric or Stone Monk on uh, the Mortal Realms.com forward slash Discord. Um, and uh, you can find me there. You can find Mike there. Mm -hmm. Chat about Warcry um, and all the good stuff. If you have thoughts on inspiring presence, uh, you know, make your own video. <laughs> <laughs> We're not listening. We don't care. <laughs> but come chat with us about it. Yeah. Uh, give us uh, maybe stories about when you've used it. Mm -hmm. uh, share those with us in the Discord or in the comments below uh, if you're watching this on YouTube. Yeah. Or the comments above if you're watching this upside down on YouTube. Uh, yep. And this has been uh, the Barking Lot. Woof, woof. Woof, woof. Did so we cut? Is it? Oh, so we're still going? <laughs> we'll workshop it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. We'll find something. <laughs> All right. Catch you next time. See ya. It's time to put a muzzle on this episode. If it was a good, good dog, support the show with a positive review on iTunes, sharing it with friends, joining us for hobby discussions at themotorrealms.com forward slash discord, or leave a tip at themortalrealms.com forward slash Patreon. More content is available at themortalrealms.com and on Twitter at Dogs of Warcry. Do you want me to like introduce it for like the first time too? Like, like hey, this yeah. is doing the doing yeah. the barking lot. Yeah. Is that what we're going to call it? That's for the first one. For now. Well, we're until, working shopping. Until, until we decide that there's a better thing to be. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, now it's called this. <laughs> Brand new podcast from Dogs of War. Tune in four episodes from now to see what it's called then. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I do. I do like that it's a different name every single time, too. <laughs> like, Better. What if it's just a different podcast every time? Yeah, we, we talk about topic. Like in the title determines what we talk about. Don't ever tune in ever again because it's never going to happen. <laughs> don't wait for anything. Yeah, you yeah. just is, forget you ever saw Tell this. a friend they might like the next episode. <laughs>
Ask a friend if they're into brand new podcasts every single time. Do you want any semblance of repetition? You're not getting it.